So, Governor, uh, there's a bill that's going through the Senate right now where they've removed the exception of pushing teachers up before elderly citizens, still moving them up to 1A. If that bill, along with a five-day face-to-face, came to your desk, would you sign that bill? What we, the principle we're operating on is the vaccine needs to go to the people most in need of the vaccine. And those are the elderly, those are the older people. The statistics have demonstrated that all over the country. That was the, when we, the pandemic began. The goal was to keep those who were susceptible, most susceptible alive, to keep them out of the hospital, have room in the hospitals. So it is the elderly that need to be vaccinated first. And that is the principle we've been following. We're down to 65 years old now. And we still have a lot of seniors who have not received a vaccination. We want to see that all of the seniors who want a vaccination receive one before we open the vaccinations up to any other group. And I'll say that a lot of groups that are unique groups and all have asked for certain considerations. And we, we are we are trying to see that we move the vaccination, get the shots into the arms as quickly as possible to the most people possible all across the state without exception, but emphasizing the seniors, the older people, because they are the ones who may die if they do not get a vaccination. And we will not put a younger, healthier person ahead of an older person who may die in this state. Governor, yes, ma'am. My, my message to the House uh, has, has been to the House and the Senate has been the same uh, for years, and that is you get that heartbeat bill to my desk and I will sign it. Should, should the courts, so should it get caught up in the, in the courts, though? I mean, is it your hope that the legislature continues to push these, the, these pieces of legislation every single year, or should this be the defining one and after no. we, we should continue to protect life, the whole our effort in the pandemic is to protect life of the older people, our position with the lives of the young and of the unborn children is the same, to protect their lives. Whatever we need to do, we will do it. And, and lawsuits happen, some are won, some are lost. Sometimes the courts change their views. We think that the court that we have now may have a different view of some of the, these questions uh, than those that went before. Yes. If I could just go back to the, to the education question. I know you and, and Superintendent Spearman uh, quoted the CDC saying that the CDC, as long as schools are following these strict restrictions and, and putting in the safety measures, but one of the key safety measures is social distancing. And that's one of the things that teachers say is just impossible with the size of their students in their classrooms. So would it still make sense to at least have teachers where they could get the vaccine? Not necessarily in front. Well, we want the schools to be open to face-to-face, -face, five days a week, education and learning for any parent who wants their children to be in school. Some parents don't. Most parents overwhelmingly do, and we know the reasons why. But I'll remind everyone that since the beginning of the pandemic, we've had independent, private, and Christian schools that have been open uh, full time since the very beginning face to face we've had a number of districts that were open from the beginning full time face to face I think the 27 districts now out of 79 that are open full time face to face there's no reason there's no reason for all the schools not to be open full time face to face the, the CDC recently has confirmed what we knew all along and that is a Vaccination is not necessary to go back into the schools. Also, that the schools, are, there's virtually no spread of the virus in the schools. There's virtually no evidence of a transmission of the virus from the students to, to the teachers or staff members. There is evidence of some small evidence of transmission among them, among the older people, some of the teachers and some of the, uh, educa some of the staff members, but most of them got the virus after, after school, school is, we know, is one of the safest places that people can be. So the answer to your question is, those schools ought to be open, they ought to be open right now, 
If I had the authority to do it, I would require it. I do not have the authority, but the superintendent has some authority and we are working towards getting that done. We, we, have, we want to see that the money that, 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 that we have gets to those places that need it. Uh, the, as you know, we want to open full, full, full uh, K kindergarten across, across the state to everyone. Whatever we can do to educate the children of this state, get them ready to move into the, the future, all kind of new jobs. We have to invest, invest, invest in education. Whatever we can do to help educate all the children, we will do. We, we have provided uh, the money to do that. Yes, we want them to get those step increases. We, listen, the teacher pay raise has been an issue that we have promoted for some time, and we, we got one uh, two years ago, and we wanted to have another, and that got stopped by the virus. So now what we're asking, asking the General Assembly to do is to go back and give them those step increases. Uh, it, it, we know that we, we have to have the very best teachers in the country. We'll want to have them here in South Carolina. We must pay them in order to have them. Governor, um, I want to uh, just self um, On the issue of Amy Cofield, uh, yesterday she told me that she plans to file a lawsuit if you do not reinstate her. Um, since you haven't made any public comments since your executive order got fired, I wanted to give you the opportunity to weigh in. What is your message to Amy Cofield? Well, we have spoken in the executive order and also in, in a, uh, a letter, and uh, I'm not going to comment on, on that uh, further, but those documents speak for themselves. Governor, do we have any update on the vaccine supply anymore coming to us? Anything that we haven't already spoken to you about? We know that it's, the supply is increasing. Uh, gradually, it started increasing about three weeks ago. And we are feeling some of, some of that now, particularly in the Moderna, or not in the Pfizer, but in Moderna. We know that the supply coming to our state is not going to decrease. So we have, we have a steady supply. It will only go up. We are hoping it will go up much more sometime during the month of, month of March, maybe towards the end of March. But our job is to see to it that we get it out into the people's arms to have places available for them to go as just as quickly as possible. And if when we we now have a, a good network set up, it's growing every day. It's uh, getting stronger. We have, as you know, the National Guard is involved. The Emergency Management Division inv is involved. We've hired project managers. We're still testing. We're moving some of our testing uh, people over to vaccination spots. But our goal is to have the network working and at maximum speed so that when these increased doses come in, we can get them out to the people even quicker than we're doing now. What, what is your thought so far on uh, Director uh, Stimber's job so far? Have, have you all had We've had a number of conversations. We have uh, uh, phone uh, conferences uh, every morning to, t to talk about this. And we also have uh, all the agencies together every, every week, once a week. And, of course, COVID is, is top on the, on the agenda. But I think he's highly qualified. We're glad he's here. And uh, we, we look forward to, uh, to uh, working with him very much. Two more questions, if there are. Yeah. How did you feel, sir? OK, uh, well, we just got through one of the worst months for coronavirus. And I'm sure you well remember, like we all do, that last spring and summer were some of the worst prior to that. What is the state doing to try to make sure that we will have safety restrictions. So are we just going to try to make sure our vaccinations are pretty much done by that point or to a safety effect? Or are there any specific plans to try to mitigate big gatherings, uh, bike weeks, people on the beaches, that kind of thing? Well, we, we still have some restrictions on large gatherings that uh, uh, those uh, having such can go to the Department of Commerce and, and get uh, permission to go over the 250 limit. But yes, we'll be watching. Uh, of course, we hope the virus is receding. We hope the vaccinations will have a big impact. Uh, we, we hope that uh, 
that things will be better tomorrow than, than they are today. But if, if it, something happens, if it takes a turn, I can assure you that, that we have the whole team is on the field in the different agencies and the personnel in every, every department. And we're watching this like a hawk. And when we have to, if we have to change, if we have to implement, or when we can remove or, or lessen or change direction, we will. Well, I'm going to stay out of that political arena for a while. Uh, we have a lot of work to do here with this pandemic as well as other things, and I don't want to distract from that. That's, where, that's what we're concentrating on right, right now.